Oof. Hey, it's Tuesday. Time for the live hall pass. And tonight, it's all about relisting or delisting. That horrible thing that you have to go through in your head to decide, what am I going to do with these things I haven't sold? Well, tonight on the Hall Pass, we're going to talk to you about different ways that you might be able to relist or things you might have to think you got to delist. So let's get into it. Rawr. Woof, just what everybody needs, two of me. <laughs> ah, hey, everyone. It's Craig, aka hey, Bad Dog. You all know who I am, those of you who are here already. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on this Tuesday night as we tackle... I'm sorry, Dax, I scared Dax. <laughs> I don't know whether it was the barking or the two of me that scared uh, him. Um, you may hear a little barking in very soon because... Mr. Rick forgot to buy our Lotto Max tickets for tonight, and it's seventy million dollars and uh, forty-nine million dollar thing. We never win, but he's out. I I sent him out because we didn't have any tickets, so he's gonna run and get the tickets. Then he'll be joining us shortly. And when he does, oh, he's coming in the door now. Doug will probably bark a little bit, maybe not. What is that Dark Shadows thing? It's actually Dark Shadows. Music from the original Dark Shadows by the Hobbit Orchestra. Oh, it's the Robert Oh, Cobert no, Orchestra. the Dark Shadow. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look how long his hair is. <laughs> Finally, he'll be yes, able to get I'm, that. I'm a doobie brother now. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, everyone, hope you're having a good Tuesday. I'll say a quick shout out to everybody I can see who's joined us already today uh, on this Tuesday. Carl was first in line. Hey, Janet and Julie uh, and Susan and Nellie. Hey, Nellie. Uh, she'd actually done some good stuff on her uh, purging and stuff like that. And Dax and Brian. Uh, Miss Lisa and other Lisa. Lisa Boland, Lisa Wallace. Mr. Greg. Uh, Diane, Diana. Holly. Hey, Holly. Um, do, 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 see if I'm And Sherry. And Heather. Joel says he has the winning ticket, so why did we buy it? <laughs> Becky from Ohio, Miss the Jewelry Queen. Uh, yeah, it is a lotto run, because you can't win if you don't play. It's very true. Uh, so he's getting in here. Uh, <laughs> I used to watch it, too, and I was afraid of it, too. Uh, and Rick's hair is so very long. So um, we actually... Uh, hey, Laura. Not that doobie. Uh, or, yeah, I guess it could be one of the... <laughs> so, yeah, so we're happy about... No drugs to be we're happy about two things. Well, happy about two things. We're happy about a number of things. Well, number one, we're happy about the fact that in Ontario, where we are, the province of Ontario, they have finally said they are lifting the uh, little bit they're taking a little lift on us being able to start shopping for non-essentials, which means that some retail places will be open. And in light, in all likelihood, most thrift stores will be in Ontario uh, with a 15% capacity maximum, which is good. Uh, now, they shut down two and a half months ago. So we have not been thrifting for all of that time. And so we are going to do a, uh, for those of us who are in Ontario, we're going to do a thrift store showdown throwdown. Uh, and I know Carl's, I'm going to make Carl do it because uh, he, I know he's been itching to. So for next Tuesday, that's going to be a thrift store showdown throwdown with some Ontario folks. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit more in our Kennel Club uh, Facebook group. So if you're, most of you are in here, so uh, are in there. And if you aren't, all you have to do is uh, give us a little support on our Two Dogs Digs channel here by joining the Kennel Club, and you'll be part of our Facebook group. Some of you may also be in here, but you're not in our Facebook group. Let us know if you're not, because we've noticed a few people who weren't in our Facebook group, but they are a part of the Kennel Club. So if you'd like to, to do that, that's great. Hey, Sherry. Uh, oh, you were buying a new car. Very nice. Uh, are barbers open in Canada? No, actually, they don't. They're not. Legally, they're not supposed to be open in Ontario. There are other provinces. Every province has, just like the states, every state has something different. Um, in in Toronto or Ontario, they're not supposed to be, but there are people who are doing it on the side, sort of thing. Like, 
flouting the rules. Um, so, <laughs> but, and we don't need to, we don't need to at all. Oh, hello, Dan Glorious. Uh, we don't need to actually do that shopping at all. Uh, but uh, we are probably, I am, I just need to. Well, not only that, but uh, yes, Doug, I, we need to find things. And it's just one of those things that I need that little bit of incentive. I need to buy something. It's sort of like if I buy something, I might list something more. So that happiness number one is, yay, we get to go shopping. Happiness number two is we're done with the warehouse. I mean, it's not happy, but it's happy. Everything has been moved into our house now. So we've got our house, our garage, a storage unit, and we have so much stuff that we really wouldn't have to thrift for another couple of years, really. But we're still going to do it anyway, because it's just, we're like that. We're like an organized hoarder house. And I started actually saying that it was something that I realized actually even today, when you see, if you ever watch the TV show Hoarders, you see people having challenges getting rid of stuff, challenges going from... Well, we were doing the same thing, walking from room to room, and I'd like walk in one room and go, oh, this is, and then I'd take this to the other room, and then I'd be, oh, what's that? And oh, I got to tidy this cell. It's like, and then realize that half an hour later, welcome to my world. I did not know what I had started to trying to do. So, um, and number three, yes, Lisa, number three, it's Pride Month. Yay, we don't have a pride flag. I, we do, we just don't know where we buried it. We think we might have a pride flag. Um, but we're proud and we're pretty loud. At least I am anyway. Uh, so on our, on my personal Facebook page, I'm posting, a, a, a post a day about being gay. Uh, and I, yesterday's was all about the village people, which was a concert I went to at Maple Leaf Gardens back in the 1970s in 1978 or 79. I went to Maple Leaf Gardens, which was the hockey arena in Canada. And they had it shut down. And it was a place where other people played, like the Rolling Stones had played and the Beatles had played. But it was their disco bash at the uh, <laughs> Maple Leaf Gardens. And at the disco bash at Maple Leaf Gardens, the village people opened up uh, with uh, Gloria Gaynor. And um, Gloria Gaynor had one hit that most of you probably know, I Will Survive. And Gloria sang... I will survive as her opening song. And I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what it sits in in my head. Then she sang something else and then she sang, I will survive. And everybody went, yay. And then she said, and now for my last song, I will, <laughs> I will survive. And she sang it again. And when she left, everybody clapped, came back on for an encore of, I will survive. I swear to God, that's all I can think of in my head that she sang <laughs> over <laughs> And over. That's all I remember about that concert. And then the village people. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, one of the, the things that I remember. And every day I'll be posting something about that, including my a uh, few other little stories and things like that. But yes, as Becky said, thrifting is in our blood. The hunt for the treasure is real. Happiness is not obtained unless we shop. And it's always one of those things where you, it's like the it's the big FOMO, the fear of missing out on something. And it's like, I don't know what I would have got, but if I know somebody else who shops in the same place I do and I see them post something, I was like, I could have got that. Uh, so, <laughs> and, oh, good for you, Julie. Hey, Julie rescued a, a, a flag from Goodwill. Hey, Gail, welcome. Hey, Daniel, new fan from Ottawa. Oh, you're in the same market as Carl is. Carl, the lazy reseller. His counter rescues flags from Goodwill. I hate to see them. Uh, excellent. And we can make giant caftans from those things if we need to. Diana's got to do a purge, uh, so that's interesting because we're probably going to have to do a purge. And <laughs> Susan is like, thankful she's been able to shop on Max Sold. A couple of things we finally we found Spoonie. It took us a little while; her skirts up a little bit, but we found Spoonie in our move. Yeah, you left me there. At least I got a place to stay now. Thanks, Spoonie. There you go. I can you can sit behind me with the 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 muscle lady. Uh, <laughs> Catherine. So, and Sherry got a Hyundai Kona. Oh, I don't know what that is, but you needed a new one. Uh, Brian <laughs> Heather has menorahs and pride flags. <laughs> hey, Holly. Um, so, that's what, to, anyway, today is all about the fact that not only is, are we going to be shopping? But when we're shopping, we're also trying to make space. And when we move stuff, we're all trying to make space. And the, 
again, one of the big challenges, and this is again, part of the kennel club is every uh, week or we try and have challenges or month for listing challenges and the listing challenge in the kennel club this month is, uh, or this week or the month of June, we're doing a different one every week. And the listing challenge for this month was, or for this week was to try and say, look at the stuff that you've got listed and maybe it's time to delist it or maybe it's time to relist it. Or, and by delist it, I mean delist it and purge it. And Julie Kaufman, who's here in the chat, is one of the reasons that I, we st I started thinking about that. So Julie is going through her stuff, trying to figure out what she needed to do with some of the stuff. And I started, I was chatting with her and we were chatting and I looked at her store and she was asking me a couple of questions and Julie, I'm going to talk out of school. Um, and she was asking a couple of questions about some of the things that she had. Hey, Claire. Hello. Um, and uh, one of the things that she had was she was really lucky and she went to this one uh, thrift store and they had plush that was like dirt cheap, like not even a Peggy Fina Smith quarter. It was literally like, I don't, I think she paid like a dime or less. It was like, and she brought home with her to San Diego, three bags of plush. Now plush ain't necessarily tiny in some cases. Plush can be quite large. <laughs> so Julie had these three big bags of plush and we started talking about them and she was looking at some of them and there she goes, five for a dollar. That's so 20 cents a piece. Um, and so she started chatting with me about them and we were looking at some and one of the things that is a challenge, it's a challenge for Julie, it's a challenge for me, it's a challenge I'm sure for most of you people as well, is to look at things that you bought and then go, oh, what do I do with this? I'm not sure if I should have bought it. I don't know what to do with it. Well, that's one of the challenges that ended up happening with Julie. We chatted about, and she showed me some pictures of some of her plush, and it really wasn't worth the time and effort to think about because it was very low dollar or not selling items. So one of the things that I had to challenge her on is that, okay, I want you to try and look at that plush and maybe say, I know it costs 20 cents. So if it only costs 20 cents and you can toss it back to, to donate, do that. And I realized as I was saying that, I was not taking my own advice to heart because Mr. Rick pointed out that I was not taking my own advice to heart. So that was actually a few weeks back. But Julie, I've been chatting a bit about a few other things with her, her plus, and she actually brought it back up again the other day. And it was something where she had this one thing that she hadn't sold yet. And it was like we chatted about the pricing and things like that. And I said, you know what? I'm starting to think that might not be worth it because it actually is a giant sock monkey. And I mean like a 24 inch sock monkey that she could not crush down small enough so that it was actually listing as costing on calculated shipping. Remember, I hate calculated shipping. We only do flat rate shipping. As calculated shipping for her to ship from San Diego to New York, it was going to cost $65. I was like, what? So... It's, no one's going to pay $65 for a sock monkey, especially a $20 sock monkey, $25 sock monkey. So um, it's that thing where you have to try and think. It's like, is it time to relist it or delist it? And I'm seeing a couple of comments over on the side there. So what is that? Uh, Holly's taking some stuff to the local online auction. That's a really good idea if you've got somebody, and I know that uh, Dax is actually starting his, doing a first max sold, and he's actually going to be testing an online, sort of local online auction place. Lisa says she's been taking new picks of old expired listings and older still active ones. And that's, again, that's part of the, the thing is we don't, when we don't sell stuff, the first, first place you almost want to do is go, I got to buy more. But not when you have 600 items. Yep, that's how many we have. We're down a bit from where we were. We have 711 items that are listed right now. And some of our items have been listed since December of 2018, and they still haven't sold. So we're going to show you a couple of things we want to try and do with this today as well. But the, 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 uh, the, the what's the thing? The something is real. The, the drama is real. Uh, Becky says she listed 60 items alone and she's not done. She needs to get to 4,500 live listings before she sleeps. 
Well, you are at 4,300 or so. So at least that's somewhere. It's like, it's not like us who would be, I'm I need, one. I'm at one and I need to get to 4,300 tonight. Um, and you've got support. Don says you can do it. Um, Carl has already started with, he has bags and bags of stuff to donate that was sitting around for years. Yes, that's just, and that's true. Um, Don has a few things listed in 20 that you need, I need to either rummel. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think she means remove. Uh, and that's the, yeah, and Dax says, it's at least a good thing is you get your coupons back. You can get some coupons back. So we actually have, and Diana, ton, Value Village is going to get a whole bunch of stuff. I know from us, uh, we have a local place that we just found that's actually a local women's shelter. So we're donating there. We're donating. Uh, don't rebuy the items you donate. Yes, that's one of the big things. And Heather, we used to do that with puzzles. And what we ended up having to do was, because my mom, when she was alive, she used to love puzzles. And that's the best place to buy puzzles was Value Village and, and thrift stores because they were so cheap compared to retail. And if a piece was missing, she didn't really care. She just got mad. But then she circled it on the actual cover. But I started buying the same puzzles back for her. So now I do things where I actually have got some stuff I'm donating that's brand new in the box. Um, but I know it's not worth selling. So I put a big thing in my, I put my own, I've done my own image because this is me. So I know if you see anything in a store in Toronto and you see that kind of marking on it, that's me saying, don't buy this. This is actually my initial C, 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 D. So Craig Dawson. So this is my little thing. So I, I write that little thing on the back of a puzzle. I'll do this little thing in black and I'll just do that. And then I know, oh, that's a neat puzzle. And I flip it over. Oh, no, I already bought that one. So that's one, <laughs> one thing to watch. The other thing that I'll, like, I know this bugs me is I donate stuff and then I see them list it at a price that I couldn't get for it even at a garage sale and they're sell and it's gone. But, ah, ah, ah. Um, if you have puzzles, yes, donate them to a senior home. Daniel said he had to giggle. I took a friend out to show them what he did for a living and started pointing all the things that... <laughs> That was mine. That was mine. That was mine. Then they think you're like a little crazy. <laughs> yes, Zero Mama. Hey, welcome. New new, uh, new viewer. I don't recognize Zero Mama. Um, and Kev looking out for old stuff at Valley Village. Yes. So uh, it, it's one of those things. Hey, mate, Mr. Adrian. Um, Diana found a ton of his, her redonated stuff months later because they wanted too much for it. I've actually seen. Yeah, I actually, I think now in the next few months, I'm going to find a lot of it because... I have boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff um, because we moved. And so when we're, we're trying to go through stuff right now, we're putting stuff in Max Old. If something doesn't go for Max Old, then we need to look at some other place to go. But the key that I want to talk to you guys about today, especially for those of you who are on eBay, is to show you just a couple of ways that you should take a new look at, or if you haven't, if you're not used to it, sometimes I do this fast. Um, I'm going to show you how to look at finding your items that you need to look at and then thinking about ways that you can do something with those items. So right now, if you're on eBay, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you to your listing. So you're going to go into, I'll try and make this as big as I possibly can on this page. Uh, when you go into eBay, you go into your My eBay and you're going to go down to selling and that's going to take you to Seller Hub. When you're on Seller Hub, you can see we've got not a great a lot of sales this month so far, two thousand uh, bucks. But we got to push that. Um, as you know, our May was slow, but that was we sold a lot of Max sold. So I've got seven hundred and eleven listings, and this is what I want you to think about. So these are telling us a whole bunch of different filters. And remember, there's items with specifics required soon by July 1st and recommended two different things. Don't worry about the blue dot. Take a look at our other video about that. But here's what I want you to look at. If you go on this list over to the side, you'll see that you can customize the table. And by customizing the table, you can see all of, you can choose what you want to see across the top on this. So this is the way I personally customized my table for now, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it now. So this is all the things that we're going to do, the actions, the photo, the title. So customize table. And I'm going to show you, this is all the stuff I'm looking at right now. So actions, photo, and title are fixed. They're, they're in shadow, so you can't do anything. Every other one of these things, 
I can delete or I can add in or anything like that. I can put a start date or an end date. I can talk about promotion. I can see if it's on promotions. And then even available quantity, item ID, um, my custom label. But if I don't want to see the custom label right now, I can remove it. If I do want to see something like uh, whether there is a duration, I can click on that. So you see everything I'm doing on here. Now, I'm going to put that custom label back in here. Over on the side here, this is where you arrange what you're doing on the side. So to, to see from left to right. So it's going to say current price, start date, end date, format, bids, views, watchers, available quantity. Now, I don't care about the available quantity right now. So I could take it off. Or if I'm going to show it, I'm going to move it down. So highlight it in blue and click this arrow. And it's going to move it down your list. Um, time left is always at the very end. And that's where we're doing good till canceled. It shows you the very end. It shows you this one's about to renew in two days. So that's the other thing. You can't move where time left goes. It's always at the very end. Uh, promotions are in there. Shipping costs. Item specifics. I don't really care about them right now. So uh, I'm going to actually take my item specifics off. I don't really care about my custom label. Well, I might, but it'll be at the bottom. What I do care about is the end date. I care about right now the start date. And I really want to know how many people have viewed it. So I want that right by the start. So you can change this every single time that you go in. Like for whatever way you want to think about doing it. So in this case, I'm, cur I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's old. So I want to see the start date. I want to see how many views there have been. There aren't going to be bids. I don't care. But I also want to see how many watchers that may have been on this. So these, are, and then I actually think the third thing I want to look at is, are they promoted listings? Everything else from that point onwards, the format is probably going to be a buy it now. The shipping costs, I'm not concerned about. Promotions, and I, again, if I take promotions off, it's gone. If I put promotions back on, it drops to the very bottom of that list. So again, so then all you do is you save that. And now when I save this, this page is going to be rejigged in what I wanted it to be. So this is actually a good thing to do. Now, the second thing I want you to think about, again, this is just to make it easier for you guys to view. I'm doing this on my desktop, is you don't need to have these columns as big as they are. I don't need to see this whole thing this big. You can take your cursor. You'll see when you go like that on your cursor and it goes to that main line. I can drag that line in, and now I make that tiny. I don't need watchers to be that wide. I can make it tiny. I don't need start date to be that wide. I can make So I'm actually able to view more things now on this page because I'm making this smaller on every one of these things. So I don't need to think, I don't need a wide space for end date. I just need that much space. I don't need format to be that big. It can be as small. So I'm moving these as small as they can be. But now you can see I'm already, look how much space I'm now getting all of this showing up on the one page and you can think how deep this goes so this is a great way for us to try and look at things so that you're going through it and now i can very easily see i can click on these as well i can click on some of them not every one of them but if i click on watchers it keeps the order left to right but it sets it up based on highest number of watchers it doesn't do it on view. And that's always been my thing that I think is really strange that it doesn't do it on view. But what I'm concerned with now is the start date. I want to set stuff to see what started the earliest possible date and going down. So as you can see, you can click on any, you can try and click on any of these and see whether or not uh, anything is actually being done with them. Um, like whether you can sort it or not up and down. So here's what we're doing. I'm looking at these right now. And I'm starting to think, okay, now is time for me to make some of those hard, hard judgment calls. Uh, I'm just going to take a little stuff just to the side here and just see. DAX is now kicking our own butt, uh, 836 listed as of today. DAX is doing this full time, though. So we're still, but there's two of us. It doesn't matter. We can't, we can't fight bad buys from when Louis started. Uh, 
have been taken off last month, sold three things that were four years old with the new listing levels. I don't worry about leaving it listed. Well, we're not really worried about leaving it listed. I'm just wor wondering if there's anything we can do or if we need to, to try and see if there's something that we can actually do with this. So um, I'm just seeing see what a couple other people said there. I hope they take donations. They will be swamped. Yes, which means for us, it'll be the next great month plus, hopefully. Um, Don pulled listings and one of them sold before it got to us. Well, that's okay. And that's almost like the the dreaded, I touched it or I didn't touch it, I move it or anything like that, and all of a sudden it sells. Like that's... It's not dreaded. It's not dreaded. Well, it's, it's no, it's not not dreaded, but it's not... Coincidental. It's the coincidental, yes. Um, yes, and then as Heather says, you can then do bulk promoted listings, but you can't remove bulk promoted listings too. So if you wanted to add in bulk promoted listings, you can go up to here and you can think about these things. So here's a couple of things I'm looking at for ours, just to give you an idea. So when I'm looking at these, uh, Dawn says also that she looks at older stuff very gradually, others spend too much time so that you could spend on new listings. Now, and this is what, this is the challenge that Dawn, you and I go through, we've chatted about this too, is at some point though, this is just taking up space in your place, in your mind and on your store. And like, it's one of those things that you have to decide, do I really want this? What do I need to get rid of it? What did I put into it? Because if you think about it, even though your listings are technically free, they're kind of like 20 cents a piece, depending if, if you have a store or if you're paying for a listing. And if you've had something listed for two years and you've been paying 10 to 15 cents a month for that to be listed, you've spent four or $5 on listing fees, right? So that's the other thing people don't realize. You leave things on for a long time. They're taking up listing fees. If you have a store that only allows you to have 100 items in there and they're not part of the free promoted listing kind of thing, then you could, you're ending up paying for things that you may end up not having a shot at selling, but you want to know why. So here's where, here's where we're going to look at some of the things that... Hello, me. Um, I'm going to talk about... Being, actually, well, why I say hello to Nay... Uh, Nadine uh, and Lola's Thrift Talk on Friday. Rick and I are going to be on there. I will put a link or I'll have a link that is in the Kennel Club for everybody. Uh, we're on there Friday at 2 for their Pride Month uh, thing. So I, we're going to be interviewed. We're going to be the interviewees. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that we have up here and think about some of the things. So number one, I've got this Clean Flow Nylon Bomber Jacket. Uh, now, here's what here's the kind of things that I'm looking at when I want to look at this to try and start making my decisions. It's been up for three years. It's 2021, two and a half years. It's had 1,500 views, and I can't sell it for $48. I actually have not promoted this listing. So that's one of the things that you can even do. So the first thing I want you to think about is when you're relisting or delisting, do I need new photos too? Well, let's take a look at the photos that are on here. They may be okay. They may be, I don't think that is, these are all big. I don't think those are the greatest photos. Uh, you can't see how white it is. That actually, I mean, it could be because I've blown this up. That looks actually kind of blurry to me. That could very well be, how, That's. it could be because I blew it up that high. So I'm looking at this thinking I paid $4.99 for this. So why am I trying to hold on to this for $4.99? Well, I can also research the prices in here. It's been up for two years, six months, and three days. So that's, that's a little bit long. Uh, so I need to think about what I'm going to do with this. So what I want to do right now is the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to, I'm going to end this listing and then I'm going to redo it with new photos at another point in time. So I'm not taking that chance on it. I know I want to keep them. Rick is making a note that we're going to redo that. But then I'm going to go to the next... Prompt. I'm going to go to the <laughs> next one and see something like this Tasmanian bunny. 530 people have seen this. Only nobody's watched it. It's already promoted. So this tie is not really getting any kind of traction from it for two years and six months at 18 bucks. 
Now, if I want to take a look at the side here again, I've got a $6 shipping cost on it. So in this case, I'm going to try something a little different, which is I'm not going to delist it. I could. I could delist it, but I think there's a few things that are missing here. Number one, I think Tasmanian Devil should be up at the front. Uh, Looney Tunes is there. That's good. It's under other animation other uh, animation merchandise. So maybe I should try it under ties. So it doesn't say tie in the title. Oh my God! It does not even say that it's a tie in the title. So it's a Tasmanian Devil Looney Tunes. Construction tools. tie. Construction <laughs> tools. To, oh my god. Thank you for pointing that out, Rick. And thanks for beat. Well, I. <laughs> Susan, I'm going to try and name it a tie first and see if that does anything. No, I don't have that tie on Etsy. Um, but I'm going to just add the word tie. Um, I don't know where that tie is. Well, it yeah, says that it's in ties one. one. So that's the other thing is think about this from your inventory standpoint. You have a box that said ties. Where, I don't know where it is. We don't know where the box of ties is. So if we don't know where the box, I think the pictures are good. And... It is. There's construction. It's a construction worker, Looney Tunes tie. It actually, it, I think that the tie looks really good. It actually... We may have put, put all of the ties in the storage unit. Did we put the... Oh, now here's the other things I need that are required now. I need Looney Tunes in there. I need multicolor. I need department. I guess it's unisex. I need type. Uh, da, 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 da. I need tie. Style. Pointed, slim, tart. Nah, I don't we need any of those things. Uh, these are all recommended. I don't really care about the blue dot anymore. I wonder if... if uh, yeah, I don't need any. I don't really care about any of those things, honestly. Looney Tunes tie using, yeah, Looney Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, and Tasmanian Devil building using construction tools tie. This is one of the worst descriptions I actually think I've seen. It actually says it has the original hang tag too, which means I guess it's brand new. Could be brand new. There's the Ralph Marlin. So there's another thing. Guess what? It's a Ralph Marlin tie that we haven't told anybody it's a Ralph Marlin tie. So as you can see, just because you're somebody on here that knows a lot about what they think or thinks they know a lot about what they're doing, there's a three-year-old thing that we set up that either Rick did, I'm going to blame him, uh, yep. by Ralph Marlin. And uh, I'm going to relaunch this, but I'm also going to do something else with that. I actually had best offers in here. I'm going to take the best offers out of here. I'm going to put the tie because it's a... I just want to get rid of it. I'm going to put it at 1288. And I'm actually going to uh, change that to free returns because I don't think anybody's going to do it. And I'm going to change that to free shipping as well. In Canada, I think we could do that for the $3, Rick. No. Ty? No. So we have no, to have it. It'll be 1250 It'll be 1250 10 bucks. I'll put it in there. And then I am going to take that off because I don't want to pay for promoted listings anymore on this. And I'm going to update the listing. And Rick is going to look and see if he can find those ties. And there's another point. Yeah, do as I say. <laughs> Not as I do. Uh, I usually put necktie and neck tie in the title. It's a good idea, too. Um, you should end it and sell similar. Again, we kind of... We've done various tests on this using sell similar, using relist, and actually redoing them. And we found them all to be equally as good uh, when you're doing them. Uh, so it's literally up to you how you want to do them. But I'll show you one of those, which we'll do in a second. So let's go to a third one down here. Uh, this one here again. So this has got a good amount of people seeing. This is a, a an IMCO store display uh, of uh, decals. Um, 556 people. One person saw it. We've got an ad rate of 10% on it, and it's suggested at four. So what I'm going to do in that one, let's do that. We're going to end that listing. Oh, dropped away from there. Edit. We're going to end the listing. And then we're going to go back. <laughs> yes, it is. 
Lisa says you could go letter mail in Canada. Rick? Rick is looking at me like I've got two heads. Uh, so I have ended this. So here's what I could do with this one now. I can go back into this one. And in, I could hit relist or I could hit sell similar. So let's just do this as sell similar for Louie. So on this particular thing, uh, it is a car and boat monikers, which I don't think anybody's even going to really know what this is, but it says fender bender on it. And again, I'm looking at stuff on this going, I didn't realize how uh, off we were in terms of what we were doing here. These decals are easy to apply. It says fender bender. So it looked like there it's had the Challenger logo on it. So this is really close. So I think this should actually say Fender Bender car decal. I'm not sure if it's a store display. Uh, I think that there's a date somewhere on it. Let me go to my thing here. It says it's a 13 and a half by 11 inch cardboard store display advertising decals. The fender bender is in plastic and part of the display. Oh, okay, so it was an actual store display. So so again, um, at Imco is actually the company that made a lot of decals and stickers. Uh, it, they're really famous for them. So you'll see, da, da, da. where is it? I can't even see. We didn't do a good picture of that either. There's a little, it's a little guy. And if I Google. A little Imco guy. Yeah, we didn't do a thing on that. You can see here. There's, there's actually our thing on eBay right now. It hasn't been pulled off yet. Uh, but the image is for Imco. These are all stickers that are done by Imco. There he is. This is the Imco guy. So that's how you know what those stickers are. Uh, yes, actually, if it has been a while, if it's been up for a while and I'm not getting anybody, I might do some more researches. That's another thing that we we're going to talk a little bit about today, too. So in that case, I could go in now and say, well, I just don't even know if on eBay there are any Imco stickers for sale. And I could, or Imco stickers or decals, there's 171. If I go decals, there's 767 Imco decals for sale. So you can see they make a lot of these different things in there. That's for Heather. Um, so I'm going to look in my solds. Uh, actually, I'm going to add one more thing into here, which I'm going to say car, because they have different kinds. So 43 car decals. And... None of them are that fender bender thing. Well, there's close to it. It's mini monikers for cars. But I'm going to go into more filters and go down to the bottom and see if I can see. Oh, here it is. Oh, stuck on me there. Sorry for a second. So you can see it's mostly from the 1960s as well for a lot of these things. Uh, we're going to go into sold items and see there's only been 18 sold items over that whole time. Um, so it's not necessarily a huge seller. A Playboy Bunny, a Hawaii sticker, but they're also in the $9, $10, $6, that kind of area. So I think that this is something that is going to be probably a challenge to, to sell. Um, if I am going to try it one more time, there's a double hot rod car travel window decal. Uh, there's that store display that we talked about, the other one that sold, or so they had two. So I'm just going to go back into this, and again, with my, my cell similar, um, look at the description I'm going to put in so white and brand. I don't know why it says that. Imco. Um country of manufacturing. I know it actually is USA, but I'll just leave it as unknown for now because I don't want you guys watching me do all this sort of stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to take that fixed price down and I'm actually going to turn that down into a 1288 price down as well because I think it's an interesting thing. I'll take off my best offer. I will give it free seller returns. And in the same case as this, I've had this for so long. I don't I don't want to be doing this. I'm going to, I want this gone. And if I can get 10 bucks out of it, so maybe if I decide, if I'm doing that, I'm going to turn it to 1444. 
with free shipping. So I'm going through this and saying, this is all fine in Canada. That I know I can do for three bucks because it's flat. I'm going to remove the international because I don't think anybody's going to want that. I'm going to take off my promoted listings because it's way, way too high at 10%. Or actually, I'll move it to the suggested rate. So it's an extra 60 cents for me to sell that. And I will drop that up and list that item. So a couple of different things that you look at when you're when when you're considering oh great i'm sorry i'm create similar when you're looking at that i just want you to think about looking at one is the possibility of ending it and then what if you do end it what do you do with it well take a look at that and start thinking about donations maybe that's the time when you do have to think about donating something because you don't need to have it now uh, anymore. Think about the amount of money you put into it. Think about the amount of time you're going to be putting back into it as well. Um, so I'm just going to look at the side here to see what a couple people have said. Uh, sell Silmar creates a new ID, but you also lose watchers that might have been on it. I'm fine with that because in that case as well, remember um, that's one thing, Nelly, when you do that is I'm looking at this to actually see that I don't have uh, watchers to these things too. So it's not, I don't really care about watchers when I'm trying to sell something that no one's bought in two and a half years. It's a lot different. Maybe if I've got something that I'm doing something new to in the past two or three months, um, and Lisa says, as long as it's under 500 and Louis says, as long as you fold the tie in half, uh, and measure by two. Okay. Carl says he has boxes that fit the slot of doom for items like your ties or just use a padded envelope. Um, question from rags is if it's been up for a while do you re-research yeah again yes if it's good potentially good money in there uh and thank you so much yes how much faith do you put in the thing that comes up on the side that says similar items sold for 34 to 60 when you get an offer i put a bit of faith in it um it's trying to give me an idea on what's going on there so i don't mind looking at that uh and lou is saying Cut a file folder in half, lay out the tie, tape the ends, put in a poly mailer, then a large envelope, most of the time under 100 grams. We have a bunch of ties, so Rick should be paying tape attention. Tape the ends to that. of the tie or the file folder? I think you tape the ends of the file folder, not the tie. <laughs> be specific. Uh, most watchers have one to sell themselves. If they're watching it without making an offer, they're not seriously looking. That's right, Sherry. That's the thing is when we're looking at something like that, we want to make sure that we actually... Again, if somebody's got no, if I've got no, I'm going into this again. So let me go back to here and pull this over so I can show you. If I've got an item here and this is nobody, well, no, we know no one was watching my tie because I didn't tell them it was an actual tie. Um, I got two people watching the Christmas thing. I'm assuming they're probably going to be other sellers, seeing if I can get money for that. Nobody want, now, see, I'm looking at my, this is my down here. This is zero watchers, zero watchers. So I don't really care if I've got something. And again, a lot of these are, we're talking about things that are two years and five months old. So I want to, if I wanted to pay attention to something that had real watchers in it, and I flipped to this way, I'm going to probably see watchers that are from things that are up more recently. So in this case, the 70 watchers that I have on this, such as fabric that we're selling, I would not redo and I would only redo this. I would never sell similar. I might redo pictures or things like that, but we've sold a few, almost a thousand dollars worth of this uh, stuff. So um, I won't change that. The next biggest one that I have is this one, which is the Star Wars Rise of the Empire poster. We have a bunch of these. I got them for free. You can see we've had 6,000 views. We've actually sold probably a hundred of these, Rick. Um, and I'm ready to take it down even a little lower or try and put in a free shipping on these because it's like, just cause we've still got another 50 or 60 of those left. Um, in that case, I might do a sell similar with the stitch. The reason that we had a lot of people looking at this is because we've had it listed a long time, but we have a quantity of them. So we're not going to remove those. So there's different ways that you can look at these. And that's why I want you to think about shifting these around. So you can actually see this is what this is my views, my watchers. Take a look at those things and and look at them and go, well, this one's been up for two years. That's okay. This has been up for a year and five months. That one's okay. I don't mind where it is. This wave vector 
uh, fabric has been up for almost a year, but it's $450. Um, our Mary Momos, again, a lot of the stuff we have high watchers on are things that we've actually had for a while. But in this case, a Magic Band slider, it's $9.88. It doesn't take up any room. It's this big, literally, it's this big. So I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to worry so much about something that's this big. But I am going to, again, start thinking about the stuff that is larger, hasn't sold like that jacket, and trying to figure out what I'm going to end up doing. No, the fabric is not on Etsy uh, at this point. We haven't put any of our fabric on Etsy because of we just don't have good pictures for it. That one, I might try it on Etsy. I'm not sure. Um, we've had a lot of watchers on it, though. Uh, there is a cost of storing items. Consider the size of the item when you're thinking about delisting and parting with it. That's exactly, Susan, what I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm going with. You don't need to have, a, I have a bin right now of stuff that we have not got rid of which is snowsuits. And why I bought them was because they were amazingly priced. I got them at discount days at Value Villages and they're funky snowsuits from the 70s, 60s, 80s. I can't get rid of them. I have tried listing them. I can't sell them. I didn't sell them on Posh. I didn't sell them on Depop. I tried listing them on eBay. So I've got one tub that has five of these things in it. They're huge. So I've got to make a decision as to do they go or do they stay? Um, Anne Maria is like, I doesn't make sense to donate or get rid of anything until you get your death pile listed to donate or get rid of before you get your whole death pile listed. I would actually challenge a little on that and say, Anne Marie, when you're going through your, your death pile or your profit pile, look at those things and go, why am I even bothering listing that? And that's one of the challenges that Julie and I have talked about is if she, you're trying to list something that nobody selling is slow selling takes up a lot of space if you don't have a lot of space um for example her five for a dollar plush i said that's great but she bought like 40 so you've got 40 you've got giant bags of plush everywhere and we're wants to talk we have 12 tubs of plush that are moved over i got to go through those and if there is not a plush if plushes are selling for six and seven dollars no i'm not even gonna bother i'm gonna just donate them or I'm going to put them in a max sold. I don't want to spend the time to try and sell a $6 plush. I will sell it if I have 500 of them. And I think Heather actually made a comment because in the Kennel Club, she actually had something where she said she was going to relist and it was an insole for a, a shoe. And I said, is it really worth your time to spend 15 minutes or 10 minutes figuring out how to redo that shoe listing for $6? Well, she sold 100 of them. So again, same thing with my forks and my eyeball, little, little shaky eyeballs and things like that. That's what I'm thinking, Janet. That they're probably gonna we're gonna do a max sold that tries some of the clothing that we just want to get rid of. Uh, we have tried marketplace and that hasn't worked on it either. So, um, yes, that is amazing fabric. It was seven dollars and ninety nine cents at a value village. So I don't know how long. I don't know. Part of me just wants to keep it up there just to show people so they look at it. Um, but one of the things that when you're doing this, so I want you to thinking relist, delist, time to donate. Should I just change a price? Should I promote the listing? There's a few different ways that you can do it. But the main thing I wanted you to do today was to show you how you can look at these things that are in your store in a really easy way for you to start really, you can go on price. And I can say right now, I can go to price and I can look at what's what have I got that's the cheapest in here. So I have these teddy bear picnic prints. They've been listed for 10 months. I haven't really sold any. I'm doing promoted listings on them. They're only $6.50 right now. Why? And they're, I have a few hundred of them because um, I got them for very little money. I got them bags of them at Value Village. So I got to figure out a new way to do something with those teddy bear prints because they're not selling. I haven't sold one in 10 months. Uh, the fabric, that knitted fabric we do fine with. These things, I don't get it. I'm selling these scuffs, but they're $7. Again, didn't put a lot of money into it, so I'm okay. It, but two years I've had these embroidered things on there, and I got to figure out either my pictures aren't good, something like that. It's already at promoted listings. It's already I'm already doing like two dollars and fifty cents shipping, so I'm not. I can't really figure out how to do something like that. Uh, these are on Depop. I've actually sold them on Depop better than I've been selling them on uh, eBay. Uh, but again, I just don't understand why I'm not selling these simple like skulls as patches for anybody because i think i got i think i got 
pretty good pictures. I've got individual, or well, there were individual pictures, but now I don't see any individual pictures. But but you can go zoom over that and see what it is. Maybe I need to figure out a new way to, to talk about them or something like that. Becky, I want you to drive to San Diego and you can uh, pick up some plush from Julie. <laughs> um, I haven't put the teddy bear prints in Max Old. I might actually do that as well. I never thought about that, but that's a good idea. Uh, and Or, yeah, lot up the plush. Again, just watch when you're lotting up the plush that you're doing. You're thinking about the shipping on that, right? Um, oh, Dax, I promised I would mention that to you. Actually, yeah. So one of the things, Dax is actually uh, going away, and he's got to change his handling time, and I promised him I'd show him in the show. So it's really easy. So these are all the active listings that you've got. So all you do is click on that, the entire thing, right? So this is everybody on there. So I go edit edit all 710 listings. And when I get to that 710 listings, in this, click on this first thing here and edit fields. In edit fields, handling time. In handling time, change to, select your handling time. And so you've got a choice between five business days and 10 business days. So that hopefully... And then you save and close that. So I am not doing that because I do not want to change my handling time. But that's how easy it is to change your handling time. Now, while we were doing some moving stuff around, there's one thing that ended up happening was we had one of our little buddies. Well, one of our little buddies. We had our little buddy, Doug. And Doug decided to do some digging. So guess what? We got a new little section called, Look what I dug up. I'm Doug. So, <laughs> Doug has been pulling up a few things for us, and I'm going to show them to you now. This is some of the stuff that Doug dug up from our profit piles that we're trying to figure out what to do with these things. Um, one of these things he managed to dig up for me, which I was so happy was he found this, Rick's favorite toy. So I'm, I don't know how to shut it. I think it has to run all the way through before. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll have to hide that because it will actually probably end up disappearing now that it made it to the house. Um, here's something that Doug found that I thought would be a great thing. And we bought these out of Valley Village and they turned out to suck. And they suck big time. Like, they suck on uh, Max Old. They suck on eBay. This is an Elton John... Um, Thing from his concert and it's actually this lovely passport holder and for and like this is so it's you think in pride Month, maybe i'll put them back up again for pride but a gold lame passport holder and luggage tag um we got two of these uh with a poster from this concert and uh i think that we paid like 4.99 for this each set because i thought oh my god i've well actually i think we had three or four of them we couldn't get more than a buck or two. <laughs> Greg has them too. Huh? <laughs> yes, but Greg has them because he bought one from me, I think. Did you buy that from us and Max Old? It might have been. <laughs> this is like, I can't believe this is, I don't know what to do with something like this. It's probably going to go into the next Max Old because I'm not going to donate it. In, in this oh, case, but... saying give it to Edward. His birthday is next. Oh, week. E for Edward? Edward? No, e. no, I know, but that says E. But then this, this, yes, this says Elton John underneath it. So I don't know if he really wants um, this, or maybe because it's so. Uh, Send it to Sherry. No, he. Oh, he got his for fifteen dollars. <laughs> um. Oh, Sherry, you want it? <laughs> Guess what? So, it's coming to Sherry. Uh, and then Doug found this, which I completely forgot about. And I think this is so cool. It's Sometimes Doug finds things that are cool and all this stuff. And this is a thing he found, which I have no idea where we got it or when we got it. But take a look at this. This is DuckTales Jello Molds. And this is like vintage DuckTales. So I don't know what year this came out. Let's see if it's got a year on it here anywhere. 1989 and DuckTales is back in the zeitgeist again. So it's actually something that I've got to throw this on in the next week or so onto, uh, I think I might even try this one on uh, Etsy 
uh, versus going into Max Soul with that, but or going into um, eBay with that. But I thought that was cool. Or I might try it on a Facebook Marketplace group as well, uh, because there are some people who would really like something like that. So this is really cool. Big size Jello molds too. So I thought that was neat that he found. And then there's something else that he found that we kind of forgot about, which most of you people hated. Rick hated it terribly when we showed it originally. And just because of that, we're actually going to try and sell it. We're going to put this on auction. This is something that we found at a AMVETS, which is an American veteran uh, thrift store in the States. And we found this big tube. And I can show you. See, this is still, this is the tube that we found them in. And there's the AMVETS price. It was $2.98. Um, we don't know why these said that these went to the University of Hartford in Bloom in Hartford, Connecticut. We don't know if that's the real thing for them. But what was inside here that we decided that we had to buy? Well, it was two photographs. It's we're calling it. I've been, I've started building the draft for this already, and we're starting to call this uh, this draft that, uh, that I'm building. We're calling the draft navel gazing a study in innies and outies and it is two photographs <laughs> these are 30 inch by 30 inch navels this is like this is like this they is the, belly this, buttons. they are belly get buttons this is the size of look this is get your mind out of the gutter gutter i didn't put my mind in the gutter uh but yes we <laughs> we got the two of these and we forgot all about them I know that's what, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I have started building um, a, a, a listing specifically for this. I think for some bizarre reason, I'm going to list it under weird things. I'm going to put it on auction on eBay and we'll see what happens with that. And I'm going to start it because it is so, so, so bizarre. I am going to start this as uh, an auction at at least a hundred bucks and see if anybody will give us $100 for an Indian and Audi. So I mean, Doug finds some stuff, and then he finds stuff that I just don't know what it is. And I had to hold this back from Rick from deciding he would try and put his googly eyes on. But maybe one of you can... Yes. So... <laughs> I know. I know. That can't be answered. You're welcome. Uh, try Depop for the navels? Really? No, that can't be that. <laughs> Uh, so here's that. Here, let's leave you on a better note than that, which is maybe you can tell me what this is. This is something that we found, and again, this is a Doug thing. There it is. There's a bottom on it that screws off, but there's no markings on it that I can find anywhere. It's got this little teak thing, and I, I, it's like a little beak. It's very MCM. <laughs> But Rick, these are actually um, decals that are on it, but Rick wanted to glue googly, googly eyes. eyes on it. And I don't know what it is. That's just it. A peanut dis it's it's cute. It hasn't not got the googly eyes yet. Shaving cream dispenser? Right. No, no. Maybe peanuts? We got two shaving cream dispensers, interestingly enough. Sugar? I thought about that maybe for a sugar thing, because you could pour the sugar out here. Okay, it's good. I'm not insane then. I was the only person. I thought, I don't know what this is. So I'm trying to figure out, especially when you've got something like this, how you list it. Now, somebody's going to tell me, use Google Images. Well, I'm terrible at using oh, Google look. Images. Look. A vintage bird peanut dispenser. Oh. German design. W Rick just that. found a... How did you find that? <clears throat> Rick just found this exact thing on Etsy. It is a listed as a vintage bird peanut dispenser. Lisa says there's a bunch on Etsy. Sure. So I guess we'll put this peanut dispenser on Etsy. We'll see if it can sell it on there. But now we know what it is. We won't put any peanuts in it because if we did, Doug would go after me. It does look like a penguin. I thought so too. It's actually real. I, I, I don't know. Maybe this won't go anywhere. This might, this might be one of those things that we shouldn't. Yes. It does look like Beaker, doesn't it? <laughs> maybe it's one of those things that we will keep. Uh just because. Um, so again, today was all about list it, relist it, 
delist it. I want you to go in and think about some of those things you've got. I saw some of the folks in the Kennel Club. And again, thank you. If you are a member of the Kennel Club, we got a few people who are hit, have hit their six-month anniversary with us and three or four people who have joined us in the past uh, month. So thank you very much. Um, we will be posting a new Woof, which is a watch out for the end of this week. We're going to get into some more videos coming up there for the Kennel Club. But um, there is uh, a post in there. If you've got a few of these things under our weekly challenge for this week, our listing challenge, which is try, we ask you to try and find five things that you can actually get rid of, change, do something for. Um, oh, no, not the, okay. Day was trying, don't put the, put the, the ducktails molds on Depop. Do not put the belly buttons. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I can bring those to Friday's show as well if you want me to. Uh, <laughs> just let me see if I can find the link to that. Uh, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so take a look at that. Go through that. See if you can find a few things that you can delist, um, things that you actually may have thought, I don't need to put more time into this. Um, I don't need to spend a lot of time redoing this. And let me see if I can find the link to... I wear a spicy subscription thing. There is the link. I'm trying to find the link to Nalo's show on Friday. Here we go. There it is. Here is the show on Friday, which is Celebrate Pride Month with special guests Craig Dawson and Rick Belanger. Yes, he, he, appear, he says he's going to appear uh, live in two days. Uh, and if you have not subbed to Nalo, Nadine and Lola's channel, she's just this shy of a thousand. Try and sub into there because that's really, really great uh, to get her up to a thousand. Um, they do shows every single week pretty well on Friday afternoons, but they're great to watch in reruns if you needed to do this. Uh, Adrian is delisting everything he wants going into his max soul. Good for him. Heather's delisting things you can't find. That's another good thing. Yay, we got one more, one sub from Carl. Huh? Yeah, that'll be actually July. Is <laughs> put the patches in a lot and sell them to me. Well, okay. Connect with me, Louie, outside, and we'll figure something out, maybe. i got a bunch of them sitting here that I can't do anything with. Um, but, yeah, send me a message in our Facebook group, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Because i got a bunch, and I'd rather get rid of them for somebody else who could use them as long as I'm making my money back. Yes, Doug, I hear you. Doug's time. To, Doug says it's time for Doug to go out. It's 9 o'clock, and that means it's time for us to go. So thank you so much for joining us here on our Relist It or Delist It show. Uh, hopefully, you'll join us every Tuesday. And if you're not a subscriber, please think about subscribing to us. Uh, and all you have to do is hit the join button to do that. Um, so relist or delist, do it, do one of the two things, show us some stuff that you've got there in the Facebook group. And we'll see you back here next week. Next week is going to be a thrift store showdown throwdown with some Ontario people who have not had a chance to go to a thrift store in months. So I'm going to have a special challenge for them. We might actually have Becky Joyce join us as well with a challenge to join us from Austin as well. Uh, but we will see you in a week. Right, Doug? Okay, now he doesn't want to talk. Of course, now that I'm saying right, Doug, he doesn't want to talk. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. See you soon.